Hey VC, it's Craig back at you for another video. And today I want to talk about buying used vinyl. What do you look for? How do you know what to bring home? How do you know what to put back in the bin and leave? Okay. Everyone's got their own way of doing this. And um, I've been doing it for a while. And some of the things that I'm going to mention to you today I think are pretty useful. Good, good arsenal to have on your on your vinyl buying belt, if you will. So when I walk into a place, whether it's a thrift store or a record store, um, I see, if I see crates and crates and crates of vinyl, I may not have the time to, you know, go through them all one by one like this. Okay. Now, if I do have the time, then I might. You never know. But one of the things I look for when I'm buying these things, the, the very first thing I look at, because it's the first thing you see when they're all in the crates, right, is the top of the outer cover. Now, you can see that that is pretty worn out, right? That record has been slid in and out of a shelf, a cupboard, or whatever, so many times right and so that's the first thing i look at is the edges of the cover now when i'm when i'm going through records and i'm in a hurry sometimes i won't even look at the ones that have that much wear on them i'll just go right past them and i'll just get i'll get to the ones that don't have that much wear and i'll, I'll look at those and see what those are because more than likely those are going to be the ones you're going to take home if you like the record okay but Let's suppose, here we are, okay, it's Led Zeppelin, um, uh, Song Remains the Same, right, it's a classic record, and so I'm looking at it going, okay, it's the, the cover looks horrible, um, but it's worth checking out further, okay, so now you're going to go in and you're going to pull out the record. Now, if the record's got no inner sleeve, it's just sitting in there all by itself, that's another indication that I'm probably not going to buy this record, regardless of how bad I want it. But in this particular case, it's not too bad. Okay, it's not ripped. Um, now it has it has some tearing on the sides here, which could t indicate to me that it's been in and out of this sleeve a lot of times, or in and out of the cover a lot of times so this record's had a lot of handling to it i think i mean if it was just sitting on a shelf somewhere none of this would be here none of this would be none of this damage would have occurred usually okay so the cover looks pretty good it's got a little thing out of it there but other than that it's a led zeppelin album it's worth going into it further at this point if it was just an average record that i didn't want that much i would have stopped and i would have been well on my way to the next bin Okay, so once you get into this record, the third thing that I look at, of course, is the record itself. I mean, you, you, you know, you can look at it, shine it around on the light. I usually take a magnifying glass with me, and this is a lighted one, so I can really get down and look and see if there's any scratches. And I look at the dead space. I look at that because you can really see scratches. Has there been a cat walking over this thing, you know, over the years or a dog? Um, obviously any significant scratches are going to be a problem. And if that's the case, again, that's a strike against it. But if it looks pretty good, then the, the one thing I always check is this outer edge. Okay. Not the, not the edge like this part, but the, the raised edge of the record where you put down the stylus, I guess they call it the outer groove or the outer dead space. I don't know. Okay. You look at that. That tells you if this record has been put on a spindle where it, you know, falls down, you know how those, the record changers, when they fall down, guess what parts of the record rub? The raised edge and the label, because those are the, the raised. So if it's if it's showing a lot of wear around that, so get like I said, get your magnifying glass, take a look. This one's got 
it, it's pretty grungy right on the highest part of the outer rim here. So I'm thinking that when I put my stylus down on that, I'm going to be hearing a lot of unwanted noise. So this record was a dollar. Okay, so I gave it the benefit of the doubt and I bought it. However, when you take into account, you know, the, how damaged the cover itself is, um, slight damage to the inner sleeve, and the record itself has got some minor scratches on it, and the raised edge of the record is scuffed and fingerprints and is rough looking. Nine times out of ten, that record's going back in the in the crate for somebody else. Okay, that is really the procedure that I probably went through when I bought this record, and. Um, you know, the other one, well, it isn't even in the sleeve. And that's, that's the way it came. The sleeve's probably uh, ripped and broken and whatever. So, you know, this record's probably going to be, you know, not played. Okay. I have another copy of it, which plays much better. But that's what I just thought I'd use this as an example. So we'll put that down. Now, on the other side of the coin, let's see what else we've got here. I mean, we've got, um, <laughs> I've got some interesting ones here. This is a pile that's not in my library. Okay, let's choose this one. All right. Now, on the other side of things, it's Erasure. I don't mind them. I'm not like a huge diehard fan. But, you know, I saw this record. I saw how clean the cover and shiny the cover was. Okay. Uh, there's nowhere on the top or the back or the bottom. And there's no ring wear. I don't know if you saw that on this one. It did have some, uh, some, not too bad, but some ring wear on that. So it, it's been pulled in and out of the shelf a lot. This one, on the other hand, has not. So, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, it's Erasure. It's pretty good stuff. I mean, whatever. If it's a band you think you like and you might want to own the vinyl, this is a good candidate for further examination, even if you're not a diehard fan of the of the record itself but hey you might want to own it because it's in good condition well that's the other thing if it's in wrong like if it's in where the opening is not put on top of the you know that's an indication of whoever owned it didn't know how to treat the records right you always put it in with the opening at the top um okay so it's got a static free thing on it which is cool now, let's see. Now, I wish I could get a close-up of this. I mean, I'll hold it up, but in comparison to the one we j I just looked at, first of all, the dead space is crystal clear. No cats have been walking around on this thing. Um, I don't see any major scratches on it. Um... And of course, you know, you look at it, right? You just, you judge it the way you normally would judge a record. Sometimes they don't have good lighting in thrift stores or whatever. So take a flashlight or get one of these, you know, They're, you can get them for cheap, right? Because um, with in, inappropriate lighting, uh, it's hard to see anything. And I've gotten records home that looked great in the store and I got them home under my fluorescent light here and it was terrible. Um, the other thing I'm seeing here is uh, my my good old friend, the outer raised rim of the record. Let's take a look. Very clean, no scratches, a little bit of lint, a couple of hairs, no indication that somebody has been dropping the needle down onto this thing carelessly, okay? Because if they've been doing it at the beginning, they may have been doing it on certain tracks of the song too. So. I swear by looking at the outer edge. If it's clean and it doesn't have any damage, then it's worth examining the rest of it and going, okay, yeah, this looks like it could be a pretty good piece of vinyl. And it is. It's very shiny and no fingerprints or scuffs on the outer edge of it. Because a lot of people, you know, they'll pick it up like this, you know. 
I don't agree with that. Okay, it's thumb on the edge, fingers on the label, takes two hands, get it in the sleeve, and I'm very careful to roll it in without holding on to the sleeve. If I do this, I might scratch it as it goes in. I always grab the part that's not touching the record and let it roll in. I damaged a brand new Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon record by, you know, putting it in and just like this, you know. And guess what? Guess what I did when I was holding it in like that and letting it scrape along? Something happened to it, it got scratched. So, okay. I don't care that much about this record really, so I, you know, I'm not worried if it gets damaged, but it's, you know, it's just an example of one that I bought that is in just by judging all these little points that tell you that the you know what journey this record has taken over the years has it been pulled in and out of the shelf a lot um has it been squeezed or you know is there a lot of ring wear is it warped um has there is any is there any um moisture damage um once you get into the past the outer cover get into that how is it is there a sleeve in there or is it just in there all by itself then you look at the record itself. The outer edge is really important to me. And if all that looks and checks out, then I'm liable to buy it if it's one that I want. Okay. So, and I did buy this one. It was two bucks. And, and it sounds good. I mean, I don't play it very much, but that's why I used it for this demo because I'm not too worried if it gets damaged. Now... The last part is what do we, what do I do when I get it home? Um, like I don't have a wet cleaning system. Um, I'm not. I don't have a lot of faith in. I've seen people doing like spraying with stuff and you know, alcohol and water and a little bit of dish soap or vinegar or stuff. I, you know, I've seen all this. Um, distilled water. I've tried a few of those things. Um, I, I wasn't particularly satisfied. I'm not saying they don't work. Um, I've just I've had some experiences where I've done them on some of the records, and I ended up with it worse than you know it was before. Not in terms of dirt and scratches and stuff, but I'm talking just surface noise in general. I mean the water residue, even if you're using distilled water, there's still minerals in there. Well, there shouldn't be in a still wa distilled water, but you're putting you know, other things that people put dish soap and, you know, I don't know. I still think that if you don't get it dried properly, when you put that needle down, you're going to hear residual stuff that's stuck in the grooves. It's going to take three or four plays to get it out of there. And then it's all over your stylus. So, um, if the only way that I'm ever going to wet clean my records is if I get one of those really expensive machines that you has the vacuum and all that. Um, and they're about $800. I'm probably not going to be getting one of those anytime soon. So um, I basically, I just don't bring home records that I don't think are going to play well with just a basic dry cleaning. I just don't, okay? I don't buy records that I think are going to need any more than just a decent record brush. So I've got this one here. It's It's got the um, sort of the velvety stuff in the middle. It's got the carbon carbon fibers down each side. So I turn my turntable on. I kind of do sort of a, a three-part three part roll. You know, start it like that and then go like this and then bring it off and then sweep it off the side very slowly. And maybe I'll do it again. I'll take a look, you know. And that's all I do. Okay. And if the record still doesn't play after that, well, I shouldn't have bought it. That's all there is to it. Now, of course, there are some classic records that you just can't find decent copies of. And in that case, it might be worth going in and doing some wet solution cleaning thing, whatever, and you know, whatever you can, whatever you feel comfortable with. After I've used this a few times, then I don't mind going in and just taking this sort of lighter hearted one, which you see all over the place, you know, these ones, and just doing a, a, a quick swipe just to get any dust you know accumulated from just taking it out of the sleeve um creates static and you know i've actually gone as far as having a um a, a humidifier down here in the basement um to moisten the air 
to stop some of the static that happens when you pull these records in and out of the shelf, especially in the winter. Having a humidifier, even like um, ones where you put the water in uh, and you just they, they boil, like you know the ones that you, you get put on when you're sick or whatever. Um, I've plugged one of those in a couple hours before I do any playing of records, and it does help a little. So that's what I do with vinyl. Um, I'd say a good majority of the ones that I do own are not in need of wet cleaning at all. And there is one thing that I, I have done that um, if you get a record that has a big pop in it, but it's just one, one pop, not, not, a, not a repeating one that's obviously a scratch, but just one big right in the somewhere, likely that's a big piece of dirt, a big boulder. And what I have done is taken an, you know, a, uh, not my good phono cartridge, the one I use all the time, the, um, the AT440 MLA. I won't do it with this. But you can take another phono cartridge that you, ha you trust that you can use for back cueing and stuff like that. that getting damaged and you can put the record on and find the spot where there's a little click and just stop the turntable and then gently scrub almost like a scratching like you do it when you're doing rap stuff just gently scratch it back and forth and you can scrape out that piece of dirt in about four or five little scrapes it does not harm the record and it's a good way to get a really annoying right in the middle of your Fleetwood Mac rumors album there's a great big click and I've had success doing that. Just clean it out. Scrub it back and forth with your, not your good needle, but one other one that you've got, uh, and it takes it right out. Give that a whirl. If, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, don't. But uh, there are some records where I just can't, I can't, I can't bear to have them have that big crack. I'd rather just get rid of it and buy a new record. So rather than do that, give that a whirl first. And if it works, hey, you just saved yourself some money. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And that's that's my technique. I'd love you to share your comments down below. Um, some of the things that you do when you're buying records. If you've if the record store has a turntable and they're willing to play the thing for you, great. You, you can you know listen to parts of it you know while you search for other records. And if it sounds good, though, there you go. But you know, oftentimes that's not the case. So anyways, again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.